Well, just a word about this lesson. It covers quite a lot of information. So if at any stage you want to stop the video, just pause it and do a little bit of practice and come back to it. That would be a good idea. So let's go through and have a look at some more of the measures of central tendency. Now already we've had a look at the mean, which is also called the average. Now we're going to have a look at the mode. And according to the definition of a mode, the mode is the score that occurs most often. It's the score, another name for this, or sorry, another phrase for this, it has the highest frequency. So let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got these scores, 3, 7, 8, 9 and 9. And it's clear that 9 occurs the most frequently. So we say that 9 is the mode. It's a very simple one to find, but the idea is always to recognize that you would expect the scores that occur most often to be in the middle. Well, in this case, it's not, but it is still called the mode. All right, let's go on and have a look at some other exercises. Here we've got a frequency table. And in a frequency table, we can actually see the mode very, very quickly. So here are the possible scores, and this is how often they occur. So if you look down here, the biggest frequency is eight, which means that seven is the score that occurs most frequently. So here we could say that the mode is equal to seven. Over here, what we've got is group data. So we would say in this situation, which group occurs the most often or in which group do the scores occur most frequently? And we go down the frequency column, we find the group that is most frequent and we actually say that the modal class. These are all classes or groups, but the modal class is equal to the class that is 10 to 14. So we call this not the mode in this case, but the modal class. Now that's all you have to do to find the mode. What we'll have a look now is the third measure of central tendency, which we call the median. Now I'll move this up, there we go. And let's have a look at the important details here. So the median is actually the middle score, but the scores have to be arranged in ascending order. That is the smallest to the largest score. So the median divides the data in two separate parts, the lower half and then the upper half. So half the scores are below and half the scores are above it. So we'll take a few examples and see what we can find. Now first of all, these numbers are not in ascending order. So whenever you get this situation, the first thing you do is to write them in ascending order. So we're going to do that. So in ascending order, these would be 3, 7, 8, 9 and 9. And the next thing you've got to recognize is that there is an odd number of scores here. An odd number of scores. Now this is significant because when there is an odd number of scores, then there is actually one middle number exactly. And you'll find that when the scores are even, there are, that's not the case. So if you look at this one here, I'll, um, you can see very clearly that 8 is the, the median. There it is there. There's the bottom half, the top half, and 8 divides it. So 8 is the median. Let's have a look at these ones here. Once again, these are not in order, and so you can't do anything with them until we get them in order. So let's do that. We'll arrange them in order. So we've got 3, 3, 4, 5, I'll just separate these with commas, 8, 8, 9, and 9. Now we're going to cross off the scores from each end because we want the middle score. So let's take three scores off here, three scores off here, and you'll notice that there are two numbers. And so what we need to remember is when we have even numbers, even number of scores,
we get two middle scores. And so the median is the average of these two scores. All right, so all we need to do then is to take this, we can say that the median is equal to the two scores added together, five plus eight, divided by two to get the average. In this case, the median is 6.5. Now the 6.5 number does not even appear in that list of numbers, but that is the me median and that's how we work it out. And the median would sit right in there between those two numbers. Now we've got one more to do. And um, oh, by the way, you'll notice that there are four scores, one, two, three, four scores below the median. Now remember, I'll just write in here that the median goes in there and that's 6.5. So we've got, and I'll change, change the uh, color again, we've got four scores below and we've got four scores above. So there are four scores below. Here, you've got a situation where you've got two scores below and two scores above. Let's have a look at the last example. And so I'm going to just push this all up the page. Come down, there we go. And let's have a look at C. Are they in order? Three, four, eight, two. No, they're not. So in order, they've got to go. So it's two, three, three, four. Uh, there's three eights. And there's a nine, a nine, and a ten. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Even number. So there's going to be two middle scores. So let's knock off the outside scores. So we'll go knock off four scores off here and four scores off here. And there are our two numbers. And you can see straight away that the average of those two numbers must be eight. So the median is equal to eight in this situation. So if they're the same, you can see you don't have to, the average is going to be the same number, so there's no problem with those ones. So that's the median and how to calculate it when you're given a, a list of numbers like that. But what about when you have a frequency table? So let's have a look at what happens when you've got a frequency distribution table. We're going to work out the median for this one here. So the question is find the median of the scores in the frequency distribution table. And the secret to this is to actually draw what we call a cumulative frequency column. Now, in order to do a cumulative frequency column, we start by saying that the first frequency is five scores. There it is there. But by the time we get um, down to, now, if, just have a quick look at this. It looks like we've actually got um, the wrong numbers. Yes, just hold on here for a minute because we've actually got the wrong numbers here for these ones here. So we need to fix that. So just pause this for a moment. Don't look at um, what we've done here. What we really need to do is to um, change these. We need to sort of ignore this. So what I'll get you to do is to um, ignore these scores here and we're going to have to draw up next to it. So I'll put a line through this and you need to do that in your notes. And we need to notice that the data that we're looking at, score and frequency, is what we've got here. So we've got a score of 20. Not sure what happened there. 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. And over here, what is happening here? Oh, I've got the magic pen on. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's try that again. We've got the score. And we've got the frequency here. So we've got 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And the frequency is 5, 7, 11, 9, and 4. So let's get rid of that. I'm sorry about all that, but we've got it going now. So 
we'll put the right data together. Now, going back to what we do with this, we've got to create what we call a cumulative frequency column. And what it is, you start with the first frequency here, and what you do then is you add the next frequency to the previous one. So there's our first frequency. We go 5 plus 7, that gives us 12. That's our accumulated frequency. Then we take 12 and add 11 to it. That gives us 23. There's 23 plus 9 gives us 32. So that's the scores that we've got to so far. So 32 scores have occurred to this point. And when I take 32 and 4, I get 36, which simply means there were 36 scores altogether. If I actually add up the frequency column, that's what I get. And the cumulative frequency shows how they accumulate this. Now, what this means is at the first score, the second score, right up to the fifth score have occurred so far. By this time, the sixth score, the seventh score, right up to the twelfth score have occurred to this point. In this group, we must have the thirteenth score, the fourteenth score, right up to the twenty-third score. Now this is very important that you get this. From here, you must have had the twenty-fourth score, the twenty-fifth score, right up to the thirty-second score. And in here, you go from the 33rd score right up to the 36th score. Now the point about this is that if there are 36 scores, we can actually work out which one is the median. Now, if you had 36 numbers, you could say that you took 36 and you add one to it and you find the average of that and that will be the 18.5 score that will always be the median little trick there but you can work this out um, just simply by going through look you can do it if you had numbers like this three four eight and five there are one two three four say six there's one two three four five scores there so if you go five scores plus one divided by two that gives you six divided by two that gives you three that means that the third score is the median and sure enough there it is the third score is the median so if you've got 36 scores add one to it halve it and that will tell you where the median is so if you had 100 scores, add 1 to it, 101 scores, halve it, 50.5, that would be the 50, that would be the median score. It's not the median, but it's the median score. Now we need to find out where the 18.5 or 18.5, 18.5 score falls. So we'll have a look at this with another colour. This goes to the fifth score, so it hasn't happened yet. This goes to the twelfth score. So it hasn't happened yet, but you'll notice that the 13th to the 23rd score falls here, which is the score of 22. So therefore we know that the median must be equal to 22. So you need to practice how to do that and you can review this by going over the video again, but that's how you work out the median when you've got one of these um, scores. You've got to form that cumulative frequency column in order to do that. A little practice and you'll get that right. All right, we're just about there. So let's have a look at what we do to work out the median when we've got group data. Well, this one's set up correctly. Here's our group data. Here's our frequency. So all we've got to do is to accumulate the frequency. So we can say then that three scores have occurred to here. 3 plus 18 give you 21, so up to 21 scores here. 21 plus 47, up to 68 scores here. 68 plus 32, so up to 
a hundred scores to this point, a hundred plus fourteen up to 114 scores now and then 114 plus 6 that's up to that's 120 scores so far so there's 120 scores altogether so where is our median well our median if we take the number of scores plus 1 and divide it by 2 we get remember 120 scores plus 1 divided by 2 121 divided by 2 gives us 60.5 so 60.5 our 60.5 if you say it that way 60 and a half score is going to be our median score has 60 scores occurred yet no has 60.5 scores occurred yet no but 60.5 scores must have occurred I should put a cross here actually because they haven't occurred and so it must have occurred here so that means that if we go across that is what we call our median class so we'll call this our median class and that's equal to 350 to 374 and because it's grouped data we don't know exactly where it is but the median must be in there somewhere and that's as accurate as we can get with that one all right now we can actually it says here um, we're going to well we'll just go down a little here and just have a look at this you can actually plot all this data on a line so if you drew what we call a cumulative frequency graph notice that these lines match the groups remember there were 120 scores altogether and if we drew this particular graph cumulative frequency graph we can actually read off it quite nicely where the median is let's have a look at this now it takes a bit of drawing but it actually will work it um, in the end so I'll just take a highlighter and we'll go through this the 60th and the 61st scores are in the 350 to 374 look there's 60 cumulative frequency 60 61 if I take this across here and I drop it down to here you can see that it says that the values of these scores read off to this point down here and what it says in the notes is that from the table it is only possible to state that the median is in that group there remember we did that in the previous uh, example or just above now this is sometimes called what we call a median class but we could estimate the median to be at the class center which is 362 alright so there's the class center we could estimate that but a more accurate estimate can be found by using this here which is also called the OGIVE now the OGIVE part is the line that joins the columns so if you draw a cumulative frequency um, graph like this you get the columns when you join the tops up like this you get an OGIVE and when I draw across from here to the OGIVE and down I can get a much more accurate picture of where the median is so it says to find the median using the OGIVE locate the point half the way up the cumulative frequency axis which is 60 which is half of 120 the total draw a, ho a horizontal line across to the OGIVE drop it down and then what you can do is to read off on the line a number that is very close to that and in this case it's very close to 372 now once again you can review what we've just done here and it would be it would take a long time to accurately draw one of these graphs but often these are given in an exam and you need to read them off notice the 60 is half of 120 so that would be the medium position and that would read off then the actual number that's in the median that's an estimate we're not sure if that's actually the number but it is a, a good way to um, to try it out all right now we'll have a look at the last thing here which is called the stem and leaf plot using a stem and leaf plot now this is just a little bit of revision 
from last from probably in past years that you've had but it says using a stem and leaf plot um, find the mean the mode and the median all right well this is how we do it um, finding the mean would be a matter of putting all the numbers into your calculator and working out that mean so you can't actually just look at it and say what it is but I am going to give you the answer and I'm going to say have a look and see if you can work out what it is using methods that you've used before so we'll put here uh, 51.3 as our mean notice what we have here is the number 22 the number 23 another one 23 another one 26 so this is the first part of the number 41 42 43 and so on 51 55 50. and you just have to put them in your calculator and work it out so that's how you would do the mean with the mode you do this by observation have a look and see which of the leave numbers occur most frequently and if you have a look at it it seems that the leaf which occurs the most is in the seven row um, sorry is the seven here it is the seven in the 50s row so notice you've got four of those so that means that the mode must be 57 because this is the tens and this is the units so the mode is equal to 57 now what about the median well since the numbers are all in always in order and you must make sure that's the case in a stem and leaf plot we can actually eliminate bit by bit until we get the two middle scores so let's have a look and see how this works let's eliminate the first four numbers at the front and therefore the last four numbers We've still got a way to go so let's eliminate one two three four five six numbers there and one two three four five six numbers there still a way to go let's eliminate three more at the beginning and three at the end we're getting very close but I think you can see there's two more to eliminate there is our median and because they're both the same we could say that the median is the average if you like of 55 and 55 which is just 55 so there's our our median now I've done this on the small diagram but I've left the free one for you to try it yourself so you can cover that up and try it yourself and make sure that you can get the answer